of coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 634,849. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 8,931. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 3,165 with total confirmed deaths at 79. We anticipate those numbers to change as the county updates its last 24-hour operating period. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Christine Lee. It's 4 p.m. on Tuesday, December 22nd. LA County's public health leaders are saying we could see a surge on top of a surge on top of a surge if people don't change the way they celebrate the season. The county confirmed 56 new deaths and 11,271 new cases of COVID-19 over the most recent 24-hour period. Daily deaths have been going up from 12 average deaths per day on November 9th to 84 average deaths per day last week. Cases are increasing by an alarming rate, 862 percent since the beginning of the surge last month. One of the most sobering facts is that, again, we are seeing the highest number of COVID-19 hospitalizations reported in a single day, 5,709. Since November 9th, the daily average hospitalizations of those with the coronavirus increased more than 650 percent. Hospitals are already over capacity throughout L.A. County, forcing high-quality medical care to be compromised as frontline workers are getting stretched too thin. Many of these brave individuals are also getting COVID-19 as well. This week, 2,191 health care workers tested positive for the virus. Over the past three weeks, there have been more than 5,500 new cases among them. Daily case rates shot up for this group from 40 in early November to 313 last week. County leaders are urging the public to help stop the spread by staying home and not mingling with others over Christmas. That means no in-person gatherings with family members who don't live together. Public health officials say while they are encouraged that the vaccines have arrived, it will take many months to immunize the entire population of L.A. County, and everyone's actions have a huge impact. L.A. County warns residents about vaccine scams that are circulating. It tweeted a warning in both English and Spanish, saying it's a scam if someone offers to sell you the COVID-19 vaccine or a chance to get vaccinated before it's your turn. Unfortunately, scammers are using robocalls, social media posts, and emails to take advantage of the anxiety, confusion, and fear that many people have about COVID-19. The county reminds LA residents that they will receive the vaccine for free regardless of immigration status when it becomes available to them. The Federal Trade Commission echoes the county's message saying you can't pay for early access to the vaccine. And the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has been issuing warning letters to firms selling fraudulent products since the pandemic began. It lists 16 pages of companies that receive these letters that claim to prevent, diagnose or treat COVID-19. The FDA says they're continuing to actively monitor the situation and asks anyone who comes across a potential scam to report it at FDA.gov. Concerns over a new strain of the coronavirus in the United Kingdom has more than 40 countries, including Canada, halting travel from the country. Here in the U.S., New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says British Airways, Delta and Virgin Atlantic have voluntarily agreed to test travelers from the UK for coronavirus before departing for New York. But Cuomo adds that there needs to be a federal policy in order to keep the mutated strain from coming in from other states. Some health experts say this new version of the coronavirus is a lot more contagious, while others say there's no science behind that claim. Nations around the world aren't taking any chances, though. They're taking drastic measures to isolate the UK by closing borders, cutting off trade routes, and restricting travel. As you can imagine, that has led to chaotic scenes at airports and on the roads. For example, France has a 48-hour suspension of freight transit across the English Channel that's leaving thousands of truck drivers stranded in their vehicles. And German authorities temporarily banned planes, trains, 
buses and ships that are entering from Britain and South Africa, where a similar variant of the virus has emerged. The World Health Organization says the new strain was identified in the southeastern England area as early as September and has now been detected outside of the UK in Australia. Cases of the new coronavirus strain have also been confirmed in Denmark, Italy, Gibraltar and the Netherlands. An L.A. resident who had COVID-19 died after collapsing during a domestic flight. The man was flying from Orlando to LAX on a packed plane last week when he suffered what was initially believed to be a heart attack. The crew made an emergency landing in Louisiana, where a coroner there says he died of acute respiratory failure and COVID-19. The United Airlines passenger was 69 years old and passed away on December 14th. Since then, details emerged from other passengers on this flight, including one woman who tweeted that he was shaking and sweating while boarding the plane. She also shared that the man's wife told everyone on board that he was COVID positive and symptomatic for over a week. An EMT who was on that flight gave CPR to the man for almost an hour. Tony Aldapa says he performed chest compressions for 45 minutes in a tight aisle and had rotated a resuscitator and oxygen mask to help the man breathe. Now, Aldapa says he's experiencing COVID-like symptoms, including body aches, coughs, and headaches. He tested negative once but awaits results from a second test. Meanwhile, United Airlines says all passengers are required to fill out a ready-to-fly questionnaire to acknowledge that they don't have COVID-19 or symptoms. Despite heightening concerns over the recent surge of COVID-19 cases, millions of people are carrying on with their long-distance travel plans. The Transportation Security Administration tracked more than 3 million passengers at U.S. airports over the past three days. Here at LAX, officials expect an average of 920 flights a day through January 4th. That's up from 846 daily flights around Thanksgiving. L.A. County Public Health Director Dr. Barbara Ferrer says we really can't afford to repeat the mistakes of Thanksgiving because another spike in cases will be disastrous for our hospital system and ultimately mean many more people simply won't be with us in 2021. Hospitals are already over capacity and she adds that they will likely have to make some very diff difficult decisions in the coming weeks about which patients will get critical care. Congress passed a historic stimulus plan worth $2.3 trillion last night. The bill includes a $900 billion pandemic relief package that includes $600 stimulus checks for most American families. It also includes a lot of unrelated provisions such as keeping the government funded, halting surprise medical billing, creating new Smithsonian museums dedicated to Latinos and women, approving additional funding toward the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines, testing and tracing, and the popular Paycheck Protection Program for businesses. The 5,593-page bill is thought to be the largest single piece of legislation in congressional history. Months of negotiations led to this deal, which now awaits President Donald Trump's signature. This bill marks the first attempt to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic since April, with the $600 payments going to American adults earning up to $75,000 and supplemental federal unemployment benefits of $300 per week for an additional 11 weeks. It's pretty much half the amount we saw from the first coronavirus relief package, which was approved by Congress in March. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says some of the payments to individuals could go out as early as next week. Many of our nation's leaders are getting their COVID-19 vaccines publicly in an effort to dispel fears. This morning, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the country's top infectious disease expert, got his shot from Moderna at the National Institutes of Health. He says, I feel extreme confidence in the safety and the efficacy of this vaccine, and I want to encourage everyone who has the opportunity to get vaccinated so that we can have a veil of protection over this country that would end this pandemic. On Monday, President-elect Joe Biden received his first dose of the Pfizer and BioNTech vaccine. 
He said, we owe these folks an awful lot, referring to those involved in the vaccine's development and distribution, as well as to the frontline workers. He also said, this is great hope. I'm doing this to demonstrate that people should be prepared when it's available to take the vaccine. There's nothing to worry about. I'm looking for forward to the second shot. So is Jill, referring to his wife. Vice President Mike Pence got vaccinated on Friday, saying under Operation Warp Speed, we are poised to have vaccines for 20 million Americans before the end of December. It is truly a medical miracle and an inspiration to people across this country. On the same day, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell tweeted a picture saying he just got the vaccine. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi shared that she got her dose and reminded everyone to continue wearing a mask, social distance, and take other steps to save lives and crush the virus. We now know who will replace the California Senate seat left vacant by Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Governor Gavin Newsom appointed Secretary of State Alex Padilla to become the next U.S. Senator. He is making history by becoming the state's first Latino senator. California is almost 40 percent Hispanic, according to the U.S. Census. Padilla shared on Twitter that he is humbled and honored to serve as California's next United States Senator. He also thanked the governor for entrusting him with the role of defending the dream for those in his state. Padilla is a child of Mexican immigrants. He is a native of the San Fernando Valley and graduated from MIT with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. He previously served as a Los Angeles City Councilman and was the Secretary of State before this appointment. Governor Newsom says, through his tenacity, integrity, smarts, and grit, California is gaining a tested fighter in their corner who will be a fierce ally in D.C., lifting up our state's values and making sure we secure the critical resources to emerge stronger from this pandemic. Padilla will fill the seat until 2022, when the next election will be held for the six-year term. L.A. County Supervisor Janice Hahn announced a new program to help support struggling families and businesses. She is dedicating $330,000 to get food on the table for those who have lost their jobs and wages. The funding is being distributed to 10 nonprofits across the 4th District, which includes Torrance. The plan is to have the organizations purchase gift cards with the provided funding from local restaurants in their communities and distribute them to families. Participating organizations include the Volunteer Center South Bay Harbor Long Beach, Feed and Be Fed in San Pedro, and SBCC South Bay Center for Counseling. Of the $330,000, Hans' office has allocated $300,000 for restaurant gift cards. The remaining $30,000 will be donated to the nonprofits for their work identifying the families in need and distributing the gift cards. The participating nonprofits are still in the process of selecting restaurants to purchase gift cards from. Small restaurants that don't offer gift cards will be given specially designed vouchers. This program is being funded through discretionary funding allocated to Supervisor Han's office. Well, today is a no-burn day in parts of Los Angeles County. The South Coast Air Quality Management District issued this alert through 11.59 p.m. for all those living in the South Coast Air Basin, which includes non-desert portions of L.A. County. Officials remind residents in these areas that burning wood in their fireplaces or any indoor or outdoor wood-burning device is prohibited during this time. The no-burn rule also includes manufactured fire logs, such as those made from paper or wax. The goal is to protect public health when levels of fine particulate air pollution in the region are forecast to be high. Smoke from wood burning can cause health issues including asthma attacks and other respiratory problems. It can also increase emergency room visits and hospitalizations which we are trying to avoid with the recent COVID surge. The Torrance City Council will not meet tonight. It's a previously scheduled dark night. The next City Council meeting will be held next year on Tuesday, January 12th. Well, before we go at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community, feel good pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. Well, a local librarian is helping to cheer up a patron by finding some priceless stories from the past. Phil Ross, who has been working at the Torrance Library since 
1981, says he got a call from a woman who used to live in Torrance during the 1950s. She wanted to find some old newspaper articles about her from the Torrance Herald, which used to be the main newspaper at the time. She had polio at age seven and was paralyzed. The paper wrote a plea for community members to send her letters of encouragement. Well, Phil spent about two weeks digging up as much information as he could for this special person. He learned about her battle with polio and found out that she received more than a thousand handwritten pieces of mail from others who read these newspaper articles and were touched by her story. He found every article he could and sent them to the now 75-year-old who lives about an hour away. She was so grateful for Phil's help and kindness that she donated $150 along with a very nice letter of gratitude to the library. What a story. Phil says he has occasionally received thank you letters from patrons, but being there for someone during a time like this was truly an unforgettable experience. Now, if you have a great story to share, email us at COVID19Today at TorrenceCA.gov. We'd love to hear from you. Well, that's our update for COVID-19 today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as Jin Chun brings you the latest. Be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.